Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about the new release of Ubuntu 22.10. This is one of the interim releases. If you are not as familiar with Ubuntu, I'll remind you Ubuntu has an LTS strategy and it has point releases to test the software and the packages that go into that LTS strategy. So the LTSs end in the .04, meaning they come out in May, excuse me, in April, and um, they will have the odd years. So 2204, 2404, 2604, those are the ones that you're going to see that are the LTS releases. So the 2210 is the first one of the point releases that's going to give you a lot of the newer focuses and what we're going to do here first is we're going to go ahead and just have a look now as far as uh, you guys that are looking you know should I switch over to this Ubuntu or stick with the one I have my advice generally is always the same if you have a system that's working for you do not upgrade to the next release especially right away because there will be a few bugs here and there that is okay they generally get resolved pretty quickly but if you do not have a specific reason to change it's not worth the change so let's have a look first at the release notes this is kinetic kodu um which i guess the kodu is a deer-ish and you know antelope-ish type animal not familiar with that one the kinetic of course he's running um ubuntu does have this fun little play on Worbs for every one of their releases. This particular release is mostly geared towards IoT developers, which is the direction that Ubuntu is moving into. This is why they took their focus off of the Unity desktop environment, going back to GNOME, to refocus people back into the IoT sphere. Me personally, I am not a huge fan of the IoT sphere, but I can appreciate and understand the things that they are doing. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and have a look at their release notes. Mostly, this is just simple upgrades. There's nothing in here that is massively groundbreaking, although this is the release that they are introducing a lot more theming options to bring kind of the theming into some of the modern approaches that you get in a lot of other operating systems with Accent colors, something that has been long missing from Ubuntu. Uh, light and dark modes, of course, those have been in, but the accents have not. Uh, so these do have toolchain upgrades, Ruby Go, GCC, Rust. So any of the developers utilizing those platforms will have access to all that. They also do a reduced memory footprint for Ubuntu servers. So uh, people that are running things on VMs or Raspberry Pis, there is a big Raspberry Pi update in this uh, version, which should make all your Raspberry Pi and small embedded IoT technologies work really well. Maybe that's something we experiment with. I do have Raspberry Pis floating around. Maybe we can throw up some servers. In fact, I do actually have a uh, a video I would like to do with Raspberry Pi soon. Maybe I'll just go ahead and throw it on Ubuntu just because. So support for microcontrollers and embedded displays on Raspberry Pis. We have RShell, Thani, uh, MP Remote, all available in the Ubuntu repositories. These are support for MicroPython. And they do have some upgraded enterprise management tools. So you can go ahead and see what those are going to look like as well. They do have some improved desktop usability. So these ones are the ones focused towards the desktop users, the version of Ubuntu we are going to look at specifically today. Refinements in GNOME 43, GTK4 theming, improved performance and consistency. Uh, quick settings provide faster access to commonly used options such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, dark mode, and power settings. And we have Pipewire audio platform. So this is going to be the first one where Pipewire is implemented in place of Pulse Audio. Some people will be very happy about that and some people will not. Of course, it does use a lot of Snap applications and other reviewers are saying that if you are focusing on Ubuntu with snaps then it's going to work really well if you're trying to bypass snaps it may not work quite as well. 
So, uh, with that, uh, uh, new stream snap available up on the Ubuntu software store includes the latest Mesa so that the gamers can be confident they're always up to date regardless of their host OS without the need to configure additional PPAs. So, that is good. Of course, PPAs are the way in Ubuntu to get more up-to-date software than what is available in the Ubuntu repositories. As far as our uh, installation system is... Nothing has changed in the installation. And really what we're seeing in this case is uh, you're just going going in. Uh, I chose for this one here to do the minimal install instead of the full install. Uh, we set up the updates um, to run. Nothing in this system has changed as far as how Ubuntu is installed. So you'll get a chance to see here just a little bit of the Ubuntu installer we'll put up here on the screen so just so you can kind of see what it looks like. It's very easy. You select your various options. You can do LVM. You can do uh, EXT or ZFS. You can encrypt the entire installation if you'd like to do so. You do have options to automate everything or to... Uh, manually partition everything. So you do have a lot of options available to you inside of this system. Now though, let's go ahead and see what the desktop All right, so this like. build we are using GNOME boxes instead of my usual virtual box. I'm gonna try and use GNOME boxes a little bit better. Uh, it just seems to work a little bit better on this particular build of Linux Mint. All right, so we get logged in over here. The one first weird thing we notice about the new build of Ubuntu, it throws your desktop icons on the lower right. No idea why that's kind of crazy, and then they just do weird stuff from there. Um, you can take care of that. Don't worry about that. That's something we can take care of a little bit later. Uh, of course, it will have your basic updater in the background, so uh, we should probably get a pop-up soon here about uh, updates needed. Here we have uh, the, not the software store, so this is going to pull things from the Snap store and from the repositories. So here is, uh, we pick Caden Live, we can install the Snap, and then we have a few different options with the latest stable, we have the latest candidate, you'll notice the version number is 22.8.2 versus 22.8.1. Uh, we have a latest beta, uh, 1612. Wait, not sure what's up with the 1612 being the beta. Uh, that's okay. We have a um, latest edge. This is also in Snap. We should actually see some options for Caden Live that are not Snaps as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do our search for these. Sometimes this has been a little bit odd uh, in the Ubuntu software store. So, all right, one of these is going to be our Snap. Okay, this one here is going to be our deb version. So this is the repository version. And so this is 22.08.2. So 22.08.2. And if you have a look at the snap version, 22.08.2, uh, the latest candidate. So at this time, your repository version and your snap version are going to be identical. As this version of Ubuntu gets a little bit older, that may change depending on when Caden Live updates things. But you can kind of see you do have options. Of course, you don't have uh, all the repository options available immediately um, just whenever you pick a piece of software. That is one of the things I have never been a huge fan of in this. I would like it if I click on here, if I can see all the different options we have, not just the one that is priority. Now, this one here, that might just be an issue with Caden Live because this one here with GIMP, we see the snap versions and we see the dev versions. This is usually how most of the packages are going to be. I've talked in length about snaps and uh, kind of my disdain for them over the years, so we're not going to spend any real time on that. Um, it's pretty much a, a foregone conclusion that is the direction Ubuntu has chosen to go. Uh, and that's perfectly okay. Um, but uh, that's what we have. Uh, we have the software store. And as far as the minimal applications, when I installed this, um, we do have the, uh, here's the calculator, system monitor, additional drivers, software updates, nothing major there. Of course, we have a, a web browser installed. And uh, 
Uh, with that, there's really nothing else. Now, you can do the full install, which has a few more applications, not a ton. It'll have LibreOffice. I think it'll have uh, Thunderbird for mail, uh, just a few other tools as well. Now, as far as the latest updates in GNOME specifically, um, we do have this theming that is resembling the more modern, rounded, big, colored, bubbly nonsense. I absolutely abhor this kind of stuff, but uh, again, that's just a matter of personal preference. I'm an old school computer guy. I don't care to do things on cell phones or tablets. I want to do things with computers, and I'm just not a huge fan of big, massive, rounded corners and bright colors and bubbles. Uh, I think it's too distracting. That's my personal choice. However, that being said, we do have a lot more options and settings here. You'll remember if you are familiar with GNOME, you used to just get a little bit of menu pull down. Now we do have some buttons making things a little bit easier. And yeah, if you were on a tablet, this would be way easier to use than the menu system. Uh, we're not, but that's okay. Now we have wired, we have light mode and dark mode enabled right here. Uh, we can change our power between a power saver and balance. We don't have a high performance option. And also inside the settings, we can't set what balanced means. That's something Windows still does great. You can go into the power settings and define what balanced means. Define what power saving means. You can set some things to be exactly what you want. This, you just have to take their word for it that this is saving power and this is a balanced performance. Now we do have, if this computer happened to have Bluetooth, we'd have another button here for Bluetooth. And if this happened to have wired and wireless, we'd see them all over here, but this computer only has wired. You can quickly take a screenshot right here. So it goes right on into the screenshot and then you can do the selection, you can do the whole screen or you can do just a window. You can do video or you can do um, the individual picture and there it is. Uh, the screenshots captured, you can paste the image from the clipboard or you can show it in the files. So here is the screenshot that we just took. So those are new fun options that are right inside the menu. These are all really, really good improvements. I am very pleased to see these improvements. Here we have suspend, restart, power off, or log out in the power. We can lock the system there and we can quickly get to the settings. Now you can see inside of our settings, uh, we can see all the information here. I've allocated six gigs to this. We're running the Ryzen 5 1600. Uh, hey, this computer's you know a few years old at this point. So it was top of the line when I built it a while ago. <laughs> all right. Um, we have Ubuntu 2204. Uh, we are using Wayland virtualization through KVM. And we're not seeing, I'm not seeing the kernel version. So we'll get to that in a bit. As far as the new options inside of here, we have network, Bluetooth. Of course, there's no Bluetooth found. Your appearance is where you're going to get your accent colors. So you can go ahead and change all your accent colors there, and that's going to um, change things around. Um, where exactly are all those accents? I don't even know where all these accents are going to be. All right, but uh, we do have the option for accents, so we can do light and dark theme. We'll go ahead and do that just to give it a try here. We have some nice new wallpapers. Um, so to match a few different of the options that you might have. So there you go. You can just kind of see what all, what all you happen to have in here. Hey, I think I've been there last week. You know, look at that. We'll go back to this guy here. Uh, as far as the desktop, this is where the position new desktops. We have bottom right. We have top left, top right, bottom left. I have no earthly idea why in the world they put them on the bottom right. Is it just to be different? I don't know. Uh, position new icons there and then we can do small normal large and tiny on the icons we can auto hide the dock or we can leave it there we can change it into a panel mode or the full dock mode and then we can change the icons bigger or smaller i personally like them a little bit well, not that small but eh, around 32 or so is where i like them to be that's where I like mine. You can show them on the primary display on all or on all displays. Of course, I'm running uh, just one monitor right here. And then the position on the screen, we can do left, bottom, and right. Of course, we can't do the top because of the um, Ubuntu things at the top. And then there's some dock behavior options. We can include network volumes, unmounted volumes. Notifications, we do have a lot of notification options. We have a global do not disturb, and then you can turn on or off notifications for individual applications. Our search can include applications or not. 
and we can turn on or turn off individual locations. Multitasking for hot corners and active screen edges are available there. And then this is just getting us any other options that we have, mostly is it in search or notifications or in some cases uh, privacy. So this one here, we should sound uh, bad example. There's so much stuff in here. Um, but uh, you'll see each individual application, whatever things they have available, uh, will have the option for privacy and whatever else. A lot of fun options. Um, of course, our privacy options, the connectivity check. This is going to be it's going to be checking if there's an Internet connection. If that disturbs you, you can go ahead and turn it off. Screen is just when does it turn off location services by default is off. And then there's Thunderbird. Uh, Thunderbolt, excuse me, uh, Thunderbird. Yes, that's the that's the uh, hybrid between Thunderbolt and uh, Thunderbird. You know, uh, so file history over here. We can turn it on. We can turn it off. We can set when it clears. We can automatically delete after a period of time. Good privacy options. I do like the a lot of those options. Online accounts, of course, on the first install, we can choose Google, NextCloud, or Microsoft. Once you get down here, there's a few other options, including IMAP, SMTP, which will sync with certain email clients you might install. We have options for sound. Uh, we have our power options. This is where you can set these, but you can't really set what these mean on each. Unless changing to these, you can set some other time and then these will toggle back but you'll see that doesn't apply so these power saving options are global these ones are set with whatever their defaults happen to be everything else in here is pretty standard use so there is um, how these settings and options work as far as some of the behind the scenes types of things the type of stuff that we like to see Let's have a quick look at the kernel version. So we're running 5.19 as our basic kernel version. I doubt HTOP is installed. Um, it is not, but we should have a system monitor. So we're just going to use that one instead of installing a new application. And you can see that right now we are using 1.5 gigs of memory. So certainly a lot more memory than you're going to get from the likes of an XFCE or a Mate. Uh, but 1.5 gig in the terms of modern computing is not all that bad. Tell right now with just us running CPUs are not being all that um, uh, active there. So that's no big deal. And then you can kind of see there are a lot of things going on in the background, but I'd say that looks apparently average. We've already looked at the applications and some of the options. Let's talk briefly about the desktop options for Ubuntu. Now, inside of uh, Ubuntu, as far as options are concerned, uh, you can look at the Ubuntu flavors. Of course, this is the first release with a brand new flavor. We are back to Ubuntu Unity. Uh, we're going to manage our tracker settings, save our preferences. So on the Ubuntu flavors list, we have Kubuntu based on KDE, Lubuntu LXDE, Ubuntu Budgie, of course, that's Budgie, Ubuntu Kylin, this is uh, for the Chinese folks from the CCP, uh, Mate, Ubuntu Studio is going to be your really advanced one for any form of AV type work. Has a lot of options in there pre-configured for people who need advanced work in photography, graphic design, music and audio engineering, things like that. Uh, Ubuntu Unity is the brand new one. This is Ubuntu with the classic Unity 7 uh, built in. Zubuntu is your XFCE. So you do have a few other options as far as your desktops, although each one of those have their own separate community, their own separate web pages, and their own separate download links. But these ones are considered the official Ubuntu flavors. So that is uh, our look at the new Ubuntu 22.10 point release available for download now. The download is perilously close to four gigabytes. I think it weighs in at 3.8 or 3.9 gig. So it is becoming a lot of a lot of uh, space for download. So uh, keep that in mind. With that though, folks, we're going to wrap this video up here. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, look at the new uh, support pages. We have set up a locals page switch to linux.locals.com. We are also cross-posting our videos on a number of different platforms because 
YouTube keeps on community striking us for talking about free and open source media players, and we are not even talking about any possibilities or any hinting of doing anything inappropriate with them. They are simply targeting my channel because some employee at YouTube does not like the channel. So whatever that happens to be worth, but you can go ahead and uh, follow on some of those support places. Of course, the other channels we are on, we are on library slash Odyssey, uh, same thing, different sites. We are on Rumble, we are on BitChute, we are on YouTube when we are not in the Gulag. Um, so you can find us on a number of different places. Thank you for watching, guys, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.